Hi everyone and welcome to part two of this five-part series on creating the perfect value stream. Now if you haven't seen part one, go ahead and click on the link on this page and view that. I'm trying to keep each of these parts or sections relatively short. I know we're all busy and if you're like me, when I see a video that's half an hour long or more an hour, I just my heart sinks because I know I really don't have time to sit through it. But I'm trying to keep each, each of these around 10 minutes or so. So uh, you can you can budget your time for that and know uh, that it's going to be done in a relatively short period of time. So part one, view that first, and then let's get going on part two. So what we're doing is building the case that the heart of lean, as taught by Taichi Ono and the Toyota production system, is really not focused on eliminating waste. That's a common, what we're calling a misconception. Actually, the heart of lean is to look at the work we're doing and put it into a flow. And the analogy that Tai Chi Ono used was the river, so creating the river system. And of course, waste and efficiency and quality all have an impact on the ability to flow. And just to recap, in part one, we said that flow, definition of flow is the ability to move work from step to step to step to step with no waiting, no delays, and no defects. So that would be perfect flow, just like water in a river. And that's what we're trying to achieve in our business processes or our value streams. So understanding that then, knowing that our goal is to flow the work, we need to have a way of measuring that. And so let's talk about that in this part two. So measuring the flow, what gets measured gets done. So we need to have a way of knowing how long it takes from starting. That, that would probably be launching the product in a manufacturing environment or starting the work in a non-manufacturing environment, all the way to ideally the time we get paid, or at least till the time that we finish the product. You know, the product is completed and ready for delivery to the customer. So we need to measure that time, and how do we go about doing that? And of course, once we measure it, then we want to improve it, and we have a metric or way of measuring what was done in the past and verify that we're actually improving. Now, let's talk for a minute, too, about what we call this, uh, what we call this time. There are a lot of different names, and you decide which one you want to use. But a common term for this elapsed time is called MCT, manufacturing cycle time. So manufacturing cycle time is usually measuring the launch of a product to the completion of that product, where it's ready to be delivered to the customer. You could extend MCT to include the payment time, the accounts receivable time as well, if you wish. Now, what are we using this? I'll, I'll call it MCT. What are we using MCT for? Uh, some uses for it. Well, we've already talked about one. Use it as a performance baseline measurement. So we're measuring MCT for a value stream, and then we make an effort to reduce that MCT. Now, how does that happen? Well, uh, reducing labor is one way you reduce MCT. So you're taking work content out. That's a very common thing to do. Or eliminating waste is maybe another way of saying that. A big low-hanging fruit opportunity is uh, reducing or eliminating queue time time where things are waiting by linking and balancing that workflow, and then MCT is gonna go down, right? So using MCT as a baseline measurement, we measure the current state, and then we measure the future state at some point in the future after making this improvement effort. Uh, and clearly, um, we talked about this in part one, things that, that, that impede the flow uh, include quality issues as well. So uh, Taichi Ono made the point, of course, if we have high quality products, that customers are going to want to buy them. Uh, so that's a pretty good motivation. But the other one is quality problems impede the flow. So if you can improve the quality, you're going to get better flow, less rework, less hiccups uh, in the flow. So uh, that's a very uh, good um, use for this term MCT. Also keep in mind uh, that it might put a spotlight, if you're using MCT as a criteria in your Kaizen efforts, you might want to be careful about uh, launching Kaizen events where uh, there's no benefit to MCT. So you're not anticipating any change to MCT. I mean, it may, there may be good reasons why you want to do this Kaizen uh, apart from MCT. So there's no law against that. But generally speaking, uh, if there's no impact to MCT, if MCT doesn't improve, then you might want to take a look at that and um, look at your other opportunities for improvement, potentially and pick one where you are going to have an MCT impact. That's kind of a red flag. If there's no improvement to MCT, then why are we doing this exactly? 
Okay, another uh, another use for MCT uh, is a competitive analysis. Now, unfortunately, it may be hard to know what your competitors are doing uh, in a very specific way, but you kind of know what your competitors are doing from a lead time point of view. Now, there's no direct relationship between MCT and your customer quoted lead time, but I'm going to share with you in just a second a case history of a company that used MCT as a strategic competitive advantage and grew their business by 500% in a very short period of time, in a few years, by using this MCT strategy. Here's the, uh, the case history. There was an aerospace company uh, in California. Uh, they've published uh, their strategy and their results, so it's not, uh, not a big secret. Uh, the, na the company's name is Robert's Tool, and you can actually go right on, the, uh, on Google and uh, or in your browser and, and find them, Robert's Tool, uh, robertstool.net, I believe is their website. And here's what they did. They were in the aerospace environment, machine, machine shop environment, doing machine parts, right, for the primes, Boeing, Airbus, you know, all the, all the big primes. And for these types of parts, lead times were weeks. I mean, invariably, quoted in weeks. But what they wanted to do then was look at MCT and see if they could come up with a strategy, a business strategy, to reduce that lead time and not impact quality. So what they did was they applied what's called a machine cell concept. And the, the logic is this. If you can get the pieces of equipment you need for a family of parts. So by family, we mean the same kind of parts that go through the same routing, right? go through the same steps. And you can line up those machines almost like an assembly line, just one after another, and set those up. You should be able to run those parts uh, one at a time, and they just go from machine to machine to machine, and they come out the other end in a fraction of the time that it would take normally in a normal job shop environment, meaning from weeks to potentially hours right, to complete a part. So sounds good, but there's some problems. You know, Why doesn't everyone do that? Well, not everyone does that because uh, you have this issue of utilization. So if you have a cell like that, the cycle times are not all, all the same on the machines, and you could have some machines sitting there, right, idle. And for a lot of people, you know, you invest a lot of money in these machines. Having the machines sit there uh, idle is not, a, not considered a good thing. So how did they overcome this? So the basic strategy was this. I'll just lay it out for you. They would go out in the marketplace and look for opportunities. Uh, requests for quotes from these primes for sets of parts that met this kind of criteria. Similar kinds of parts that would go through the same routing. So they would look for that. And when they came up with a, uh, a potential, they would do a little design. So they would design the cell. What kind of machines do I need? And how would they be you know, physically located? Could we actually accomplish this? And if the answer was yes, over, overcame that hurdle, then they'd go out in the marketplace and they look for used equipment uh, that they could dedicate, not pay top dollar for, maybe not as capable as some other you know, state-of-the-art equipment, but cheap or less expensive, right? That they can put into the cell and not worry if it's not running all the time. So they would do that. Now, if they, they were able to locate that equipment, and there's a big market for used equipment you know, out there. So if they were able to do that, then they would go to the customer and say, look, we're not even going to bid on this RFQ. We'll meet your best price and cut it by some percentage, right? We'll undercut your best, your lowest bid, number one. Number two, we'll commit to a lead time of X. That X was days, right, for a set of parts, not weeks. So their lead times were, you know, just radically, radically um, less. And we'll show you how we're going to do this. In case this is this may sound too good to be true, Mr. Customer, but let, let's show you exactly how we're going to do this. We have the design. Right? We have the cycle times. We have the equipment. So it's not going to be a mystery how we're going to accomplish this, but we're going to do it. So uh, that's what they did. They started winning these jobs and putting in place this strategy. And over a relatively short period of time, they went from, a, I think, uh, don't quote me on this, I think about a $5 million company to about a $25 million company. And this was a few years ago, so I don't know where they are today. But you can read about it on their website. They actually, the, the founder of this company actually uh, wrote a book on this subject. So this is just an example then of using cycle time, using MCT as a business strategy 
to actually gain business and 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 focus like a laser beam on this whole idea of time, right? And getting that product to flow like a river. Now that may be an extreme example, may not apply to you exactly, but it doesn't matter what industry you're in, everyone's gonna benefit, I believe, from shorter times and a better flow of work. And when you do that, then you'll find your overhead costs start going down, you, you start finding that you're more and more profitable. And so this is a strategy that we want to uh, be, t be taking seriously. All right, so in the next, uh, in the next lesson, uh, or I should say part three, uh, what I'm going to be doing is talking about how to design a flow process. So we've been talking about designing these rivers, right, or these uh, reducing MCT through design. Uh, well, we need to talk about what is that design process because it is a methodology. It's a step-by-step -step method that requires data, requires some analysis, some calculations, and then some principles. And, and so this is what we need to do. And if your value streams are not flowing as well as they should, then one of the questions you might want to ask is, was this ever designed right to begin with? But we'll share with you how you go about doing that in the next uh, part three. So we'll see you then. Thanks a lot.